Thanks for watching the Fantasy Footballers. We have a great show for you today. We're talking about players we want to see more of. We're previewing the Thursday matchup, getting into all sorts of uh, other football conversations. And I am apparently in quite the mood today. So enjoy the show and make sure you subscribe. Stick with us all season. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Wednesday edition. Mike, the fantasy hitman, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you today. Hungry for more fantasy mm -hmm. football. Starving. Chatter. Now, I just noticed you're not in a hat today, Jason. I am not in a hat today, Andy. You broke a really long streak there. That I was did. a hat streak. It was a, it was a hat streak. Yeah, they call it a hat trick. A hot hat streak. streak. <laughs> a hot hat streak. So, um... Congratulations Thank on, you. on breaking I'm the streak. I'm getting a haircut today. Oh, are you? Yeah. So and it's so like, you don't want to go to the haircut place without your hair done? Yeah. If you go to the hold, haircut place with, with hold hat. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold All right, on. Okay. You're getting the haircut today. Later this afternoon. So today is the first day in, I don't know, at least a month. Right. That you're not wearing a hat. Correct. Because your your hair is at a point now where you're like, this is unmanageable. I need to go get it fixed. Right. But I'm going to show... The hundreds of thousands of, of people on our YouTube. You're welcome. Well, okay, I mean, he, I'm he, just he making was, sure we're You can't see. show up to the barber with hat hair. Exactly. What? He gets it. Yeah, he I, gets, no, you I know, frequently show up with hat you, hair. What because are you talking about? Mike has no idea because when Mike takes his hat off, take your hat off, Mike. It's not good. Your hair, look, your hair no, looks. That's actually pretty Your hair looks fantastic. <laughs> no, your hair looks no, like Stamos. If, if I'm a vampire, <laughs> today, like in the Twilight series. Today is not your day. No, because this was this was wet shower hair that I just, I had to throw okay. a hat on. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment whether or not you <laughs> if you're going to get your hair cut, this would you is, want to go in madness. with hat hair or not hat I hair? I choose to believe that the the uh, barber can figure it out. Yes, with cowlicks and all. Do they not like when you sit down and they start going? They through should your head, get it wet. They spray, spray, spray your spray. hair. Do they just cut? Everything's dry. You what drive, barber you go, are you going to? Yeah. Wait a minute. They wet your <laughs> yeah. hair? Yes. So what? If, it doesn't matter if you have hat hair. This if is you the, do your hair because they wet it down and they mess it up. The last thing this Jason the last thing Jason wanted was the one day he chose not to wear a hat. <laughs> me to immediately draw attention to uh, it you know, for you a five-minute discussion. Some. Like The fact that Owl immediately came to your defense. Yeah. I, I can't yeah, believe I that, by that. I can't believe people live like this. Oh, yeah. I, I think the vast majority of people live like that. No. The your, vast Your majority. hair gets out of – most people, the hair gets out of control. That's when the hat goes on. <laughs> to Rap, cover, to you're cover the up. other producer with hair here. Would you want to wear a hat to the uh, haircut? I'm, I'm with Mike on this one. Well, I'm, I'm, going, on. I'm going to the barber wearing my hat, and yeah. they can fix it after. Oh, that's stupid. Yes. No. This is absurd. You you should get a discount on your haircut if you set them up for such success. <laughs> you should they're not making them work. Look, I don't make them work a whole lot anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, welcome in. Um you noticed uh, Judge Giamatti had no contribution. You don't want to you don't want to jump in here, Brooks? I don't need no haircuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't need them. Don't need them. Um, are there, is there a place for bald guys to just go hang out for about 20 minutes? There, there you go. You can, they you they can set it. that up. Uh, welcome in. Reminder, drop it like it's hot. Waivers just went through in our league. They went through in your league. Check on who has been released into the uh, general population. I mean, uh, interesting spending on the Jaleel McLaughlin across our leagues. It just shows to me the desperation for running back. And any chance, right? I mean, the uh, the spinning was up there. Are you that much of a believer in Jaleel? I so I do like the talent. I like um, what uh, Coach Sean Payton says about him. I like that he was more explosive than Samaj P. Ryan, who honestly has not looked like good this year, passing the eyeball test. 
That being said, no, I'm, I don't want to spend up on a guy where we don't even know at this point if Javante Williams will miss any games. And he could be the third string running back this week that you're spending a giant chunk of your – I mean, the two leagues that I've looked at this morning that went through – was 25 and over 40 on your fab. I'm not spending a quarter Ooh. to almost half of my fab on someone that legitimately could be the backup to the backup this week. And it we just we the opportunities weren't through the roof. I mean, I think it was the same as P Ryan pretty much. And the other thing is we we had the show yesterday and it was a it was a a barren wasteland of a waiver wire to some degree and there was nobody at the running back position that we were above 10% fab on. Yeah, having said all that, I do think Javante misses this week, so I think you're buying yourself someone who's going to get opportunities at least for one week. Yeah, and and, and maybe more. And and it's by week, by weeks. Yeah, and maybe like like maybe the what the Broncos have been missing is this type of speed at the running back position. They've been missing a whole lot. Yes, they have. Oh, you know what they've been missing at wide receiver? A really speedy. <laughs> No, outside no, man, they're, guy that could catch 40-yard they're good. They're uh, good. bombs like crazy. Let's just uh, – they don't need Marvin Mims. Keep him on the sideline. It's going to be your weekly call out for Marvin Mims, Hungry for More. You're always yeah. going to be hungry. I said this. We, we were we were coming up with the Hungry for More segment t today, yesterday, and, and looking at all the different players. I said, can I just every single week say it's Marvin Mims? Like, I'm super hungry for more Marvin Mims. Get him on the field. You need him. He's He's done nothing but show out. Stop putting him on the sideline. <laughs> you, you need to call up the Panthers and convince them to trade for yes. Judy. No, Mims. <laughs> you can find us on X at the FF Ballers, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, and uh, the website's the fantasy footballers.com. Tons of free articles coming out every day. We got the free app uh, on the App Store, on the uh, Google Play Store. Just search for the fantasy footballers. All right, let's jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right, we are looking at some players that have been delivering over the last couple of weeks. Maybe on the cusp of being on fire even, Mike. Uh, who's your Hungry for More pick this week it is alex ander madison <laughs> i was gonna go with alex madison but it felt wrong. i thought you were trying to rebrand him uh yeah maybe maybe after these two weeks that's what he needed and maybe he just needed a little lex. bit a little, <laughs> lexi Ooh. lexi madison maybe he just needed a little more competition to to truly light that fire or perhaps he just needed the team to actually give him some volume which they have done the last two weeks the past two weeks, we're talking about 18 and a half attempts uh, on average over the over the last two games, over five yards a carry. Yes, Cam Akers is still a concern because look, Madison saw the lowest snap count of the season here in week four. But in two weeks, when they're actually dedicating themselves to getting him the ball, he is getting it going. And he, with Cam Akers on the team, I can't imagine that that Madison truly hits that that hope, the ceiling that we had in the draft season that. The Madison Truthers had in the, in the draft season that maybe he finishes as a fringe RB one because of the volume, but maybe he's maybe he's better than we've seen in those first couple of weeks, and we have an actual running back two here. Jason, if you had to guess, because I don't know if you have this number on the top of your head, where do you believe Madison is through four weeks in running back rankings? Um, I think he in running back rate, like where he is currently, he's the running back. I would guess Correct. he's around eighteen. Yeah, he's at 20. Okay. How many rushing touchdowns does he have this year? Oh, I know that one. Zero? Zero. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at all, all things considered, 4.6 a carry last week, it was a good matchup against the Chargers. 5.6 this past week against Carolina on the road. He's sitting at running back 20. With, I think, a single touchdown? With one receiving yeah. touchdown on the year and no rushing touchdowns. And so you, you look at that and you say, okay, he's kind of held it together. I mean, week two was brutal against Philly, but – you know, that's not unexpected on the road against Philadelphia, needing to come back, needing to throw the football, only eight opportunities. And he's not it, on an offense that you project won't score touchdowns as as a whole. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you, you look at uh, Damian Pierce, 
and you say, okay, I, I, I'm not sure how many touchdowns they'll get. Maybe they will with C.J. Stroud. Maybe you know it'll be better than expectations. But you know with the Vikings, like they're going to put up points. So the touchdowns at the end of the year, it's not like Madison's going to have three total touchdowns through 17 weeks. Well, uh, they play Kansas City. Not a great week this week, Bob. <laughs> for this next matchup. Jason, give me your hungry for more player. I've got a combo pack here. I refuse to leave one of these two players out. First is the aforementioned CJ Stroud. Yeah. I'm just hungry to for more. I want to watch more. He looks awesome. He looks fully legit. If you watch his uh, quarterback finishes over the course of the season, week one, quarterback 22. Week two, quarterback 13. Then he cracks into the top 12 with a 12 finish. Then he cracks into the top 10. He was the quarterback 10 last week. I'm hungry for more of that. I want – I like. I want this Texans team to be good, despite the fact that it would be great for the Arizona Cardinals to have a great pick. Yeah. I'm rooting for the Texans. They look like a fun team. C.J. Stroud is so fun to watch. They're young, um, and I, I think the city deserves it. So um, I, I want to watch more. But the other player that has to go hand-in-hand hand with this, I am so hungry for more quality play from Justin Fields. This is the exact okay. like I've tasted a little bit Ooh, of it. Quarterback special. We we just we just last week was like oh oh that's delicious. <laughs> I would like <laughs> seconds. Now I don't know that I'm going to get seconds because they don't play the I Broncos hope you're this week. But for I, nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I am I am hungry. I am famished. My this, is, this is when they give him the styrofoam <laughs> container. <laughs> yes. For his second hamburger, and he gets over to the seat and he opens the styrofoam container yeah. up. Yeah. And there ain't nothing in there. My whistle is is wet uh i would like it yeah I've, i'm ready what for, <laughs> whisper i'm ready for more uh, i'm hungry for more and i please fields feed me 29 starts um i wouldn't say you've been well fed over that duration for fantasy you've certainly been well fed for watching him play quarterback well no no but last week i was yeah i mean well fed are I'm you not talk talking about just. Fantasy? I'm saying for the duration of his career. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, I mean, I, I, I we're considering I think you his were rookie eating, year. You were eating well last season for part of last season. Yeah, I mean, you last season really you well. ate so well. Yeah. Do you think we're back? Uh, I, I, I do think fantasy wise, he's going to be good this season. I am hungry for more fantasy, but really, I, I want, I want him to level up as a quarterback. I do not believe that's going to happen. I, I, but you're hungry for more. But I am hungry. Uh, I'm going to bring up Michael Wilson again, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, third-round draft pick the last two weeks, 86 and 76 yards. In fact, over the course of the last three weeks, it's on a 17-game pace of over 1,200 yards receiving in this Cardinal offense, led by Joshua Dobbs, eventually being led by Kyler Murray. Uh, it's been a pleasant surprise, their ability to move the football. Last week was obviously a big week for Michael Wilson with the two touchdowns, finished at wide receiver six on the week but um you know you like what you're seeing right now for michael wilson we talked about him yesterday in the waiver show um i'm i'm excited about it I, i'm hungry for more i want to see them go to him in uh, higher value situations and i'm gonna I, since combo platters are on the menu today i did not know this uh i will throw in his teammate i'm actually gonna throw a hungry for more for hollywood brown right now um he has been a little bit better than I think people maybe realized over the last three weeks. Hit me, because I don't realize. Uh, well, the target numbers, 10-7-10. Uh, He's been inside the top 20 at wide receiver the last two weeks. Okay. He has scored two out of those four weeks. He is the wide receiver 18 on the season. That is much better than I realized. And so I think there's a little bit of, um, you know, cardinal blindness to right now. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. Now was that the old jersey? You guys, you guys couldn't update that. Not they not didn't owl. know that. Uh, they didn't know it was old. The, the, that the jersey's been updated. No, okay, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> um, no, I'm uh, Michael Wilson, Hollywood Brown. I think that who can keep up with these guys changing their number like every year? Not our team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, it's the worst thing to get on your case about ever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Al. Are you all right today? Oh, I'm good. Ketrin got, makes those. So you got oh, oh what then, what a, yeah, what a loser. <laughs> under the bus. Um, <laughs> That's right. You've got the it's football time T-shirt on today. If yeah, you wanna... I said when I sat down, I should have saved it for tomorrow because it's no, not it's, football. Yeah, time, it's not but... football time, bro. Dude, uh, illegal shirt wearing. 
10 yeah. yards. Just just wash it and wear it again tomorrow. Brooks repping, or don't his, wash repping it. his Orioles. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, by the way, breaking news before we close the segment out. Um, don't you dare had a, talk I had, about baseball. I had a tear in my eye yesterday. Don't you dare. <laughs> I had a tear in my eye because, do and I'm, te- I'm going to tell the world, I got a text don't from you, somebody. Don't you dare talk about I got about a text baseball. from somebody that sh- turned the game you on. Sh- you shut your mouth. There wasn't a football game You be quiet right now, <laughs> I got Andrew. a text from Jason. No, he you was, get, you'll be you'll He be was quiet. watching the don't game. Don't you ruin my brand. Don't you ruin my brand. Jason. Shh. This is a lie. <laughs> he was rocking it. Uh, it's baseball time shirt, too. Oh, man. <laughs> it's baseball time. You watched the game? He I, watched like an inning. I did the but he was good luck. Tyler Lockett uh, yesterday from for Andy. I turned the game on because I, I knew it was happening. I was like, hey, I, I want to see what's going on. We're down. Benedict a, Arnold. We're, <laughs> we're down 3 nothing, And then first play I see, crack, home run, two-run homer. Yeah, you need next, to turn that off. Next play, crack, home run. We're tied 3-3. Three to three. I'm like, I'm out. Oh, oh, it was good for us. That's all I saw, uh, yeah. I am now going to be paying him to watch the Diamondbacks, so – all right, that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats with Uber Eats. Get anything delivered. Well, almost almost anything. Running backs? No. Nah. Flapjacks, baby backs? Oh, yeah. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the 21-day practice window has been opened Here. for Jonathan Taylor Here and we go. Cooper Cup. Get out your popcorn. Yes. Jonathan Taylor's situation, uh, does he delete Zach Moss from existence? Uh, does he press you know, press this team for 20 and a half days and force them into more trade discussions? Do we see a trade that impacts? I mean, John, at this point in the season, Jonathan Taylor gets traded He's he's either staying and destroying Zach Moss, or he's leaving and destroying insert name here. Yeah, he we we've talked about it, but he has to play six games to accrue a season. Um, he you know whether he pushes the window for a while to try to force the issue and get a trade, we don't know. Um, I will say that Shane Steichen came out and said he had a great conversation with him, and that he's practicing Wednesday, so he's practicing with the Colts for the Colts. Has had a great conversation with the head coach. It seems promising that he is ready to go. Uh, Steichen said he was in good shape, but, you know, we'll see what happens when pads go on. I will say this about Jonathan Taylor. Coming into the season, he was more of a yellow alert, red alert, yeah. red alert with the injury, which we that has already played out. He missed the first month, was a bad pick. Um, but he was a yellow alert when we thought he was going to be ready for week one simply because we didn't know if this offense was going to be any good, if this team was going to be any good, if the pace of play would be really pe- bad, if the running backs would be involved at all in the passing game. And what we've seen is a very fast pace of play, uh, a pretty competent Anthony Richardson. We've seen Moss involved in the passing game at least well enough to where, look, Zach Moss has looked good two games in his career. They were both this year. For the Colts, you put even the the most ardent Zach Moss believer and truther would never say, oh, he's near the level of Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor is an outlier running back prospect. So if he's healthy and he's active for the Colts, I think there's the world where he dominates. I agree. They play Tennessee this week. Not a good matchup for running backs in general. Not sure if Taylor would be back out there this week and whether the limit snaps as he returns. Cooper Cup, another question mark there around limiting snaps. His window is open to practice with the team. Uh, this is a, you know, you're on full watch for Cooper Cup. If you took the draft capital and you invested, you haven't got a return, but that return could be coming soon. The team, you know, Matthew Stafford's playing well. It, when you look at it on paper, you say, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell, Tyler Higby. Van Jefferson, like it's actually kind of an arsenal. Yeah, it's all right. And Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua running routes and um, finding space. I don't, you know, Jason. What you're, you're a Puka manager? Mm-hmm. Puka Trupa. <laughs> Puka Trutha. Oh, uh, Puka Trutha. Yeah. <laughs> um, not great, but I still liked it. It. What are you doing? Uh, you're you're just like, continuing to play him, and and I believe that when. Um, you know, I, I saw enough flashes from Tutu uh, this last week where I started to go, hmm. He, you know, Tutu's got his place. 
He's he's got a different skill set than Puka, and th- you know there will be times where he might he might be keeping Puka from complete domination. The way that like Robert Woods was, you know, I think the 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 wide receiver seventeen, the wide receiver thirteen. He had very good fantasy relevant seasons, even next to uh, Cooper Cup's dominant performances. And I, Puka's too good. Puka is he's catching everything thrown his way. He's getting open. He's creating yards after contact. He's winning games and taking home the game ball uh, after games. He's not going away. So Selling it on eBay. <laughs> so, <laughs> to me, Puka is someone that's going to be a wide receiver two rest of season after Cooper Cup comes back. Out of, uh, you know, it's just kind of interesting, the target pace for Puka Nakua right now is 221 targets. The target pace for Tutu Outwell right now is 143 targets. So, both players are getting... Like, there might be room. I believe that right now, Puka's pace, if we are if we want to talk about um, how good he's been, it is more targets, more receptions, more yards than what Cooper Cup did when he destroyed fantasy football a couple years ago. He is, uh, yeah, 221 targets, 165 receptions, 2,029 yards. This doesn't have the touchdowns right now. Yeah, it would be four. It, to me, it's thinking about this team – Running out eleven personnel, like it's going to be Cooper, Van Jefferson is like he, he's not great for fantasy football, but he is he's the field stretcher, and then then the choice for McVeigh is do you put in Puka for the majority of those snaps or do you put in Tutu? I can't imagine it's not Puka. The snap counts for Van Jefferson are insane. I don't know if you've seen them. What do we got? 93, 83, 93, 87. Yeah, that's what I mean. So like, he's never not out there he's, cardioing it up. He's always there because he, it's a part of the play design. Like the, the, the defense has to account for Van Jefferson. Nah, huh? I don't know that's true. I mean, they think they do. I'm not <laughs> sure they should. They do by by design because if they if they don't, then it's just free touchdowns. So, they, I mean, you've got to shut down the, the, the big explosive plays, and that's why – I, that's why Puka is eating so much. This is true. Pat Fryermuth, big news this morning. Expected to miss two to three weeks. Hamstring injury won't be out there this week. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, but the tight end position, it's so easy to find somebody, right? Of course. Zach Ertz, anybody? He's probably still on the waivers. Dan Campbell, noncommittal about whether Amon Ross St. Brown will be available for Sunday's game against the Panthers. I do not like this. I do not is like this it. It's just – it's probably – Tell management. Yeah, I mean that's kind of how I, I've seen some people making a big deal about being worried about this, but I, having not known because it is unspecified, I've just assumed is this not just a continuation of the toe issue he's been dealing with, been playing through, looking fine with. So as of right now, I'm I'm unworried. If it comes out on the next injury report that it's like a knee or or something new, then I'll be worried. But right now, I'm not. I, I don't care. Robert Sala came out and said, "Brees Hall." Here we go. There will be no pitch count with him anymore. Here su- we go. Suggesting that Brees Hall will take on a larger workload moving forward. Dag Finally. Dadgummit. <laughs> this is bad news. <laughs> this is bad, bad news. I'm For so- everyone against Brees Hall? Uh, if, for me, trading for Brees Hall, which is right now when I want to do it. Like I, I, I had You're some, too late. I am too late You're now too because late. Owl's got him, and I really wanted to make some offers this morning and go hard after Brees and get him. We could still talk because he's probably not going to be good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just so you know, like live he's on been the show, sending we're those offers. He's I, been pretty disappointing. I'm doing you a favor over the last yeah, three let's weeks. Hear it, Jason, he, make the pitch. Over the last three weeks, he has averaged four <laughs> fantasy points a game. Capitalize now, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm what are you offering? You offering your second? How about Puka? Ooh. Okay. Now that now we're talking. Yeah. It, yeah. Now we're talking. We are talking, but my team is wow running back Bark. deprived. Bark. Oh, wait. Oh. Bark. 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 <laughs> That's Bully. the strategy. Bark. Bully people into taking your trades. Look, when you've got a chicken and a coward in front of hundreds oh of thousands gosh. of people. Um, you know, unless he wants to man up, make right. a trade. Of course. Oh my yeah. God. I mean, I, I totally get it. Why would you want Brees Hall no longer on pitch count versus the Denver Broncos this week? Because you want a future <laughs> superstar Hall of Famer in Puka. It's still uh, 
Look, Brees Hall being on a pitch count or not on a pitch count, it's not like the accumulation of fantasy points at running back have been impressive for the Jets. I, you know, getting Dalvin Cook off the field a little bit more would be good, uh, but we know what the defense is going to do. The defense is going to put this team in a position to throw the football. Zach Wilson showed. I mean, I didn't get to. I wasn't here Monday yes. for the discussion. Did we, you guys talk about Zach did. Wilson? Yes, we talked about that. Wilson had a good game, and I mean, he outplayed. Mahomes that week. I found myself rooting so hard for Zach Wilson to have success in that game. I mean, and he did. Charity feels Ish. good. You know what I mean? Like, it feels good to have a heart for the oh my gosh, the underserved and underloved. So it's like when you root for Zach Wilson, you're doing. We are getting Jason service. on full display oh, today. I'm sorry. Community service. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I just, I guess I'm in a mood today. <laughs> you are. You you take the hat off, Forgive and me. it's all coming out. Um, Jets play Denver, then Philly, then the bye week. Yeah, so it's going to be great this week. It might be great this week. It, yeah, it yeah. Will. I, it's going to be great. I know Jason. Jason would try to tell Al it's not. No, it'll be great for Zach Wilson. It's easy to throw on them. He's good. Garrett Wilson. I've already seen priest. your start of the week, Jason. <laughs> Deshaun Watson's shoulder will heal in the short term. They do expect him to play after the bye week. Yeah. The, the report came out that he was medically cleared to play in week four, but didn't feel like he could go. That's, so that's weird. It's, I've never heard of something like that ever where the – the medical staff says, yeah, you're good. And he's like, nah, I'm not. I think it's happened a few times. I mean. I think there's been a handful of times when you're you're kind of, uh, he wasn't comfortable playing through the injury for whatever reason. Uh, we all suffered eye injuries watching his backup yeah. take the field. It was it was weird. Uh, but what isn't with Deshaun Watson? Yeah. And we, we don't know how, I mean, perhaps it was just, you know, an extreme discomfort. But David Njoku, was like, if I can get a helmet on my burnt face, I'm going to play football. <laughs> right. So, I mean, in the locker room. That is a contrast. In the locker room, I don't know how that went over. <laughs> I can get a helmet like, on my burnt face. If, if you missed the report, N Njoku had a, an It was a pit fire yeah, accident. Like he had an accident with a fire, and the coaching staff said, I don't know if he can get a helmet on his injury. He showed up uh, to the stadium yes. with a with like uh, with a mask, like bandages like, over. I mean, he looked like uh, he looked like me in the turkey <laughs> costume from yes, two yes, weeks ago. Yes, he really he did. did. Um, but it was it was crazy. And then he yeah, was not doing the tongue thing though. No. <laughs> they they just weren't sure whether or not he'd be able to wear a helmet. He was able to get it on and it's, played, and he played it, through. It's it. really hard to give Watson the benefit of the doubt in these situations. But ultimately, maybe it was going into the bye. Maybe it was saying, "Hey, yeah. look, I, I go into the bye week." I'm not going to risk re-injuring this and hurting it for the remainder of the season. One more bit of news came out yesterday. It was weird. The Panthers looking to trade for a number one caliber wide receiver, doubling down on the season. Yeah, this is a team that's 0 and 4. That's not weird to me at all. I, I I don't I don't think. I mean, this is a team that believes in their number one pick. I got a name for you, Marvin Mims. Uh, what's your name? DJ Moore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Well, they can't because they don't have a first rounder next year. I mean, they, I don't. I like that they say they want a number one caliber guy because the the player they trade for, if they trade for one, it's probably not going to be one that we say is a guarantee number one. It also could be Claypool. It is kind of dunking on your wide receivers. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Look, you guys are great. We just need a number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's funny because that room that he's talk that that person's talking in. There's not anyone hanging out in that room. I mean, it's like Mingo's hurt, and yep. I mean, Terrace Marshall knows Ter knows knows what we know. <laughs> T Terrace Marshall, I think, has like 19 targets in the last two weeks. That's that's all you need to know. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Quick break. Back with the Thursday night preview. And what a preview it shall be. Oh, baby. Let's kick it off. <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. I just saw the video. Uh, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you saw it. The, the drop, the video drop. Sure. The three of us, the pictures in the video drop, we look like we are 
really excited about this game. So let's see if it's true. The Bears are 0-4, managed to blow it again last week to continue the losing streak. Really in impressive fashion, too. It really was. Yeah, they took on they take on the Washington Commanders who are two and two. They're at home. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Washington minus six. The over under is forty four and a half. We saw uh we saw good things from Justin Fields and Sam Howell for fantasy last week. Uh Justin Fields was twenty eight for thirty five. At this point, you know, it's it's hard. Like, what percentage of that is facing Denver at this point, a team that is historically egregious now on defense? It's hard not to correlate that because Fields has looked so bad. Then you play the worst defense in football, and then you look good. But at least he looked good. At least he took advantage of it. I mean, there have been some matchups. We've been calling for Justin Fields' bounce back for three weeks. It finally happened. Yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow should have bounced back against the Titans, and he did not. No, he didn't. And uh, Sam Howell looked really good against Philadelphia. They beat up on the back end, but it was a good performance. Uh, he's my stream of the week in this matchup because Chicago's defense is bad, bad, bad. They are 31st against quarterbacks, 31st against running backs, putting Sam Howell into streaming consideration, and Brian Robinson into must-start consideration. Brian Robinson has been very, very good this year. He has. He is the number four ranked running back for the week on our website. And Robinson is getting all of the work. I mean, I saw two leagues drop Antonio Gibson for the second time in today's waiver wire. But Brian Robinson's been we'll good. Get him so, again. so Brian Robinson on the year is the RB7 in fantasy football. And he had a good bounce back week last week. And you can't ask for much more than being at home, favored by almost a touchdown, against the 31st ranked run D that has averaged giving up 30 fantasy points a week to the running back position. Antonio Gibson has not been very involved. So Brian Robinson is, you know, is from here on out, seems like a, 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 a must start, especially given the landscape of all running backs. But with this matchup, you should be hopeful for re for a really big game, at least a touchdown. On the Washington side, I think Hal Robinson, McLaurin, and I believe Logan Thomas is in, in the mix in this game. The matchup is very good against the Bears. Schedule adjusted. They're 23rd against tight ends. I think Logan Thomas is a player that needs to be on people's radar. If you lost Firemuth, like he is streamable. Yeah. yeah, I get that. And then Terry McLaurin has seen his target share rise every single week from 14 to 18, 21 to 26. I mean, those, that's that's what we're talking about. We're up over that 25% mark against Philadelphia. He's... You you already knew he was you knew he was a stud player, but it's there's weird stuff going on in Washington because McLaurin's on the rise. Meanwhile, Jahan Dotson, while he had a little bit of an injury, it just it, it it's been all over the place. And they're short targets; they're not utilizing Jahan Dotson's superpower. I mean, he has his highest yardage total of the season through four games is 40 yards week one against the Arizona Cardinals. Managed nine targets last week in that shootout with Philadelphia, despite being injured and missing some snaps. But, yeah, but four for twenty. But no, you can't. I don't think you can play him this week. I think the ankle is still a limited practice. I mean, Jason, are you taking the shot on Jahan Dotson? Uh, it's always going to depend on who I, I would have in there. The matchup says you could Tank you could Dell start or him. Dotson. I think I would go Tank Dell. He's he's looked. Uh, Michael Wilson or Dotson. Michael Wilson. So I guess I'm not really starting. Oof. Dotson. Tyler Boyd or Dotson. I would go Dotson over Tyler Boyd. I don't. I don't trust what I've seen so far from Joe Burrow. Um, and th this matchup is good. But one thing we have to keep in mind with Terry McLaurin has how he's gotten more and more involved. His target market share has gone up every single week. He started. He, you know, he was one of the guys that was in contention for a my guy all off season. I was in love with him. Then he got injured. He started the that year. Is, we weren't yeah, even sure true. if he was going to be active week one, and we knew. He had the toe, right? Yeah, his turf toe. Um, and so that was one of those things where now we're a month removed from it. Maybe he's just getting healthier and more explosive, being able to push off a little bit better and create separation, get open. It seems that way with the targets he's been earning. On the other side, Justin Fields, uh, the matchup, Washington on the year, 23rd against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. But that just equates to 18.6 points given up. Schedule adjusted, it's ninth. You know, the game's on the road. It's prime time. Would you play Fields 
tonight or tomorrow night against Washington or Trevor Lawrence against Buffalo on the road. Fields. Well, they're they're in London. The oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, yes. So S- still on the yes, road, on the road, and technically the away team. So yes, yeah. All right. Buffalo just lost Tre'Davious White. That's a close one. I'd probably play Fields after what we saw last week. Would you play Fields or let's go Jordan Love against the Las Vegas Raiders? Yeah, I'll probably play Fields. <laughs> but the matchup is very good for Jordan Love. It is? Very good. Uh, if I'm an underdog, I'll play Fields. I want the – like, I don't think Jordan Love's giving you 30-plus points. Okay. Well, then how – I mean – Mr. Super Safety, Brock Purdy, playing the Dallas Cowboys. No, I'll play Fields. Okay. We got, we got to stay water, my friends. And I'm going to I'm gonna follow last week and hope they figured something out and that it's not just Denver. It is really funny, though, the fact that last week he was so good passing the ball. Like, yep. like really, really good. He had very few incompletions. Um, you know, one of them was a bomb Hail Mary that, you know, didn't get caught and isn't his fault. Um, but it's like, I really wish he was great for fantasy last week with 120 rushing yards and two rushing <laughs> sure. touchdowns. Cause I think that's more sticky for him. Unfortunately, he only run, ran four times. So it's like, he's, he's on pace for under 600 rushing yards on the season. That can't happen. That can't happen. And I think teams are learning how to defend those plays in particular, whatever whatever they've got. I don't think I don't think that's the case. I really I don't think you can defend Oh, I, I his think that's been the case. Rushing attempts. They're they're not doing designed runs. Like no, they're they, just literally calling fewer opportunities for him to get out and run. Yeah, but when I've watched the design runs, the they're getting stacked up. I mean, they're getting it's not like he's you know, he had eleven rushing attempts the week before. 4.3 an attempt. I mean, there was he no... He didn't need to run. There aren't any breakaways. Yeah, it, it, I mean, he he didn't use his legs last week by choice, but it's one of the... When, when you've got a, a talent like Justin Fields' legs, it's like Lamar Jackson. I just don't think defenses... Like, you're going to scheme, you're going to try, but in the end, you you just can't catch him sometimes. It's like if, if, if he gets an edge, it's like, well, he's faster than us. That sucks. Yeah, we haven't seen it this year. No, we haven't. Khalil Herbert had a big week, 11 for 103. Thank you, Denver. Five targets, got into the end zone, had a season high in snaps and opportunities. They definitely were having success with him and stuck with him. So he, I, he's the biggest question to me in this game because do you he he sucked. He was terrible. He was borderline but, droppable, and then he played against Denver and was great. He was terrible for fantasy. Like his performance on the actual field was not bad. So and they're somewhat correlated. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't getting a lot of opportunities. Well, uh, yes, th- but that's what I mean. Uh, well, yes, they are. They can be correlated, but they're also when your team is getting shellacked, which you, he's, which is going to be what happens most games. Probably what's going to happen. Will the first they half be shellacked? So you think Washington? I think Washington is, a, is is a much much more competent, more talented team that is at home favored. So it's like the the reason that. Khalil Herbert was able to succeed and get, continue to get opportunities was because they were winning. They were dominating in the beginning of this game. The fact that they lost this game is it, that's not how the game script was. The game script was they were they were up by multiple scores and just handing the ball off to Khalil, Khalil Herbert a bunch. But it's I, also five targets. I mean, it was did they the, the you have to ask yourself did they look at their offensive output and say, "Okay, that's more the road that we need to go. We've been trying to do this more of a platoon type of a thing with Roshan Johnson moving up, eating more and more snaps, or do we need to let Khalil Herbert have the primary share? Yeah, I mean, it's just difficult. There's a team that's lost 13 straight games. You have Fields, Herbert, DJ Moore, and Cole Komet that all had big fantasy weeks, and you have to do the, you know, the broad view approach, I think, and say, you know, I don't think you can chase all four players unless you want to end up disappointed. I'm going to chase... I'm going to stay in the flames with DJ Moore, who's been really good lately. And I'm fields. going to chase Fields, and I'm going to let the other two prove it. That's where I'm at. I'm in, I'm in that All situation. Right. I mean, obviously, your options are always going to come into the equation. And uh, look, if you lost Pat Fryermuth, maybe Cole Komet's the guy you want to take a chance on. If you if you eh. lost a running back, maybe you want to throw Herbert out there. But the, this is Thursday night, and I don't want to lose it on Thursday night just because I'm chasing. For Cole Komet. It is worth noting the Washington Commanders allowing 3.7 points 
per game and, to the tight end position, which is the worst matchup right now. Yeah, and, and sometimes you go, well, they haven't played any tight ends, but if you adjust for schedule and who they've played, they're still bottom five. Yeah, it's amazing because Cole Komet after that last week is now number four at tight end on the year. Yeah, so two tight ends are so that. stupid. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's just it's it's rough in the streets. So uh reminder, if you have a player playing on Thursday night, please do not play them in the flex. Slot them into your starting running back or wide receiver position so that when we get the unfortunate late week injury news, you have the ability to pivot out of somebody else. So uh anything else from this game you guys want to touch on? Nope. All right, let's hit a little bit of mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right, if you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to uh, we're gonna jump right into the voicemail. Zach from Maryland, do I trade away Waddle? Because he has been an absolute disappointment. Thanks. Short and sweet. Yeah, do uh, we trade away Jalen Waddle? Jalen Waddle's fantasy finishes this year, 31st, 41st, missed the game, 50th. Last yeah. year, Jalen Waddle, 60th on the week, 75th on the week, uh, 98th on the week, 68th on the week, 41st on the week. Those are some of his fantasy finishes on a weekly basis. Also finished as the wide receiver seven because when Jalen Waddle goes off, he go off. And so I'm – Personally, I, I think this is a volatile player. He's not the number one target, but he's the he's the type of player in the type of offense you want. Big, explosive playmaker who can be the wide receiver one on any given week. Yeah, in those in weeks one and two, he was at in a half point scoring format, nine point eight and ten point four. So it was a lower finish compared to you know a lot of the field, but that's that's still helping your team. Well, this, this is a player that has been injured, banged up quite often, um, hasn't performed so far. The question was, would you trade him? Like, would you trade Jalen Waddle for Nico Collins? No, I would. Ra uh, personally, I would rather have Jalen Waddle. Would you guys? I'm just, Probably I'm not. Um, I feel good about moving him preseason right now. For Debo Samuel, but he had a bad week last week too. I mean, wide receivers are inconsistent. Would you trade him for? He hasn't played a home game this year. I mean, on the road against Buffalo, New England, and the Chargers for his three games. He did score this weekend, so maybe you can't. But would you trade him for Calvin Ridley? Oh yeah, I'd do that. Take Ridley. Yeah, I think the most interesting name would be Puka. Puka's gonna, you know, that now is the time where people are gonna have to decide. They don't know if Cooper Cup is back, back this week, back in the next 21 days. How will Puka look when he's back? But Puka's been outstanding outside of the top, tip-top, you know, Stephon Diggs, uh, Tyree Kill type names. He's the next best wide receiver. I think it's what your team needs. I mean, you brought up his inconsistency. You look over his last 17 games played, he ranks as a C. 41.2% of the time he exceeds our threshold for – uh, wide receivers of um, a good game, which is 10 and a half points. So 41% of the time, on average, you're happy with Jalen Waddle. That 41%, you're, you're very, very happy. Yeah. So, look, if he's leading your wide receiver room, you've probably been super disappointed. He was drafted to potentially be your wide receiver one. Sure, yeah. That's the problem. But if he's your wide receiver two, I would stick with him. If he's your one and you want to go to consistency, you're probably going to get more consistency even with Cup coming back out of uh, uh, Puka. Puka Nakua or even Calvin Ridley, in my opinion. Sure. All right, let's move on. Hey, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to say love your show. Um, my fiancé and I are in a league together, and actually we get married this weekend and are actually playing each other this weekend. <laughs> so wish us luck. End the marriage early this week, Sunday. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, that's Hey, there's a there's a wedding gift from Brooks. Yeah, maybe you don't check the scores for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh bench bench both teams take yeah. the tie. Take the tie. Oh gosh, Jason. What? That's pretty oh, gross. That's pretty what gross. Is that? I I mean Mike is just he can't handle you today. Yeah, because this guy's ridiculous. <laughs> bench your team, take a tie. 
Would that be good or bad for you <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if you're uh, a different manager in that league, right? Like, I'm, n I'm not in that game, and both those teams neither get a win but neither get a loss. I would see that as advantageous it's for better, me. It's better for the league. <laughs> right. Yeah. What if you say, okay, maybe. What if you I mean, well, they lose out on a whole bunch of points, too. Well, that, that part's true, but maybe one of those teams is, uh, you know, you're maybe. rooting for them to lose. Or say you're going to bench your team and then don't. Oh, nice. Pump nope. fake. Well, you still got to bench your team. But you, then right yes. before kickoff. Yeah. Slash wedding. Uh, Waddle follow up question Waddle or Mike Evans for the rest of the season? Evans going into the bye week. I'm sure we'd take him. Yeah, it, it's an easy Mike Evans. His pace with targets uh, was outstanding. Even if you include, if you include the game where he missed with the hamstring injury, he's still on pace for 131 targets and 1,400 yards and double digit touchdowns. He's been outstanding. It does not appear that the – I mean, Godwin had a good week. Obviously, we had the absence of Mike Evans. But just watching that offense, I, I think Mike Evans is very secure in that primary target role. Um, Godwin is capable, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen old Godwin yet. He, this last week was the first week that I felt like he looked like old Godwin on film. And he was more of the first read target. Maybe that was why it just appeared. Um, because Evans was gone, you're saying? Yeah, we, because Evans was gone. But, uh, you know, he, he he looked good to me this last week. Would you trade, this is a Instagram question from iRob, David Montgomery for Jamar Chase? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I would do that. I would as well. Yeah. 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 But It won't feel good. It's, right now, Mon it, Montgomery's gonna just gonna he's gonna keep cruising. I I agree. I don't think Montgomery is going anywhere. But you don't usually have a chance to do a trade yes. like this. And even though you know you look at last week, okay, Jamar Chase had ten fantasy points in half PPR scoring. You're definitely disappointed with that. But he had nine targets, seven receptions, seventy three yards. Like that that didn't destroy you, even while Burrow's playing poorly. Uh, by the end of the season, Jamar Chase should be back to form and winning people playoff weeks. The only risk there is that they shut Burrow down for an extended period of time and you deal with the Browning to Chase situation. And I am worried about the schedule. I'm worried about the loss here for Cincinnati. But I would probably take the chance because you're trying to win the title. Yeah. Uh, not finish third or fourth. Yeah. Uh, Instagram question following up earlier discussions. Love the show, boys. Puka finishes as the wide receiver what this season? He's currently the wide receiver five on the year. I believe that Puka will finish as the wide receiver ooh, 13. Ooh, I had it right there, 14. 14, 14 okay. 13, 14, Mike. You know what to do. 15. There you go. Instagram question, would you trade – Devon Achan for Mark Andrews. Yes. Probably. Yeah, I probably would. Probably would. I mean, uh, it, I don't know what this future for Devon Achan is going to be. I still don't. I love the explosiveness. I love the ability to, you know, he's gotten into the end zone, and um, that's been outstanding. But it's going to be a bunch of dudes back there in the backfield, and so he's got to make the most of his opportunities. The last two weeks, he – completely has he went from 18 carries to eight last week now he averaged 12.7 <laughs> a carry he was over 100 right he was over 100 yards against buffalo on eight carries he had a 55 yard so run 55! but look look i mean oh and that run oh mercy some we have of, watched some of his cuts we've watched a lot of football we've seen cj spiller um, we've seen speed, and look, I there is nothing negative you can say about Devon Achan other than the fact that you know he's not going to do that every game. He can't. Yeah, he he's unless he's Chris Johnson. I mean, it is always one. I mean, it's always in the back Chris of your Johnson. head. It's yeah. Chris Johnson versus C.J. Spiller. That was the argument <clears throat> to me coming into the draft season with Jameer Gibbs, and Jameer Gibbs to me was like I saw him more as the C.J. Spiller than the than Alvin the Kamara than oh than than the C.J. Johnson. But when you've got these guys, C.J. Johnson. <laughs> Uh, w I love you, that guy. When you got Chris Johnson, when you've got that kind of speed, but you lack the size, there are 
not a lot of examples you can go to in history, and you've got some flameouts and you've got some league winners. Just I, keep playing I, him right now. For sure, keep playing him. Um, but I don't blame anyone that wants to try to trade him at his peak. This could be his peak value for the season because right now you've got the combination of extreme production mixed with still potential, you know, unknown. This uh, final question here is about a player that there's a lot of discussion on right now. Uh, it comes from Twitter at Browns2008. What is up, ballers? Am I safe to bench from Andre this week? I'm fortunate enough to have good depth to replace him. Would love to hear your feedback. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. I mean, yeah. this has been this has been B A D. I mean, Ramondre is averaging 2.7 yards per carry, and it's not like he's had no attempts. I mean, this is uh 60 attempts for 164 yards in the offense. Uh, he's scored one time. It's been a really, really bad start, and um, the passing game work sometimes saves the day, but you had reports last week that they want to give Zeke more work. If you look at the peripheral metrics, Zeke is better in every single metric than Ramondre this year. Explosive runs, yards after contact, yards before contact, yards per carry, and Zeke scored three fantasy points despite the hype. So it is not good right now. You have quarterback changes in New England. If you have if you have the ability to put in a Pacheco um, or an A-chan or uh, just a different option at running back, I would be fine with you doing that. I don't have any problem doing that this week. The, the game against the New Orleans Saints, they have been a multi-year great run defense. You're not expecting a big game from Ramondre. Um, Andy, I don't think you were here for the show where – you know, my plan for Ramondre is wait one more week and trade for him because it's, you know, it's been a bad stretch where you've got to play the Jets' amazing defense, the Cowboys' amazing defense, and the Saints' amazing defense. Defense. I don't expect good games there. After that, you've got run defenses of the Raiders, the Bills, and the Dolphins that I would expect really big games from Ramondre. Oof. So, to me... That exhale, right there. I mean, you can go. Effects, you can go get him, but I'm not making the bet. You can make that's, the bet, but that's yeah. why I'm going to be doing it because it's going to be achievable. And it's not going to cost me a lot if he if he it's has. Definitely going like, to be. I'm achievable. hoping for a really bad game from Ramondre this week because then I think I can add him to my roster without destroying it. That is the game. That's my. That is fantasy football. Plan. If he has a really bad game, then then that's five in a row. And you're gonna, and that is that's a a place where you've got to really, you got to have the stones. You got to stare at yourself in the mirror and say, like next week, I still think you're gonna be looking in the mirror, going, I meant what I said, <laughs> I, I I did. You meant what hey. you said, Jason. Because one more bad week, that stacks up emotionally. That's that's why you have to have may, the plan in place. He hmm? may not be good this year. He may not be good. That is a real possibility. But he will be for Zappy or for Mac Jones or for oh, it's, for, for it's Mac. still Mac. Mm -hmm. It is. It's still Mac. Mm -hmm. They didn't put Zappy hey, in until like, the game was over. Correct. I mean, you don't. You. I'm. I'm here for all Mac Jones trashing. I've. I've been on record a long time saying that he's. I mean, you, you're you're acting like we didn't see Mac Jones replaced last season by, by Bailey Zappy, because of performance. Yeah, nice. they are. Zappy's not the guy either. They are circling. The old drain. They just lost Christian uh, Gonzalez for the year. Had to trade for J.C. Jackson. While I the division is brutal. While I would agree that and, the uh, Patriots Judon are not just got hurt too. Yeah. While while I would agree that the Patriots are not, um, you know, an arrow pointing up, uh, team. I don't like. Let's say they go to Zappy. <laughs> I don't think it makes a difference for <laughs> Ramondre. I think snap it's counts be are going down. Just just as good. It'll be. It's the bet. That is the bet. That is the game of fantasy. So, uh, we're wrapping up. A reminder, we have a brand new Dynasty podcast episode that released this morning with a trio never before seen. Ooh. Mike Wright, Matthew Betts, and myself talking trade targets for contenders, trade targets for rebuilding teams in Dynasty. You can check that out, the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast. Tomorrow we have Starts of the Week, the matchup previews on Friday, the Wheel of Shame, the Fantasy Faceoff, more matchups, lots to talk about. Don't 
miss an episode. Go over to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe. Click that bell. That way you don't miss a show and you catch Mike on Sunday Live. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.